Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. How is everyone today? Super. So today's the 23rd. So I think, don't we usually do this? Yeah, that's better. So last time we were talking about quadratic equations, and we have just a little bit more to say about them. So for example, uh, I could give you the request, please factor uh, 3x squared plus 2x uh, and then plus, uh, say, 9. So, fac so factor this. Okay. <coughs> so I'd like to point out. This is what we're going to solve. We're we're going to we're going to we're going to solve this exercise. I'd like to point out a similarly worded exercise, and I want to compare and contrast the differences between them. Okay, so this thing in red, Gesundheit, this thing in red versus this thing in green. Now what kind of thing is this thing in green? This is an equation. So the thing in green is an equation. What's the thing in red? Is it an equation? No. Yeah, it's not, because there's no equals. So then what kind of thing is the red thing? So its name, yeah, it's a polynomial, if you like. But generally speaking, it's just an expression. Okay, so this is, a, this is an expression, <coughs> this is an equation. Now I'd like to ask about the distinction between these verbs. Does it make sense for me to say, solve an expression? No, that doesn't make any sense. You can't solve an expression. How about, does it make sense for me to say, factor an equation? No, this also does not make sense. Okay, but I'm pointing out the distinction because because I've had a few students present this confusion this week. Okay, so then you can factor an expression, you can solve an equation, but you can't mix these things up. Okay, now part of the part of the reason for the confusion is, I suspect, is just impre imprecise usage by your former instructors. Maybe that's that's part of it. Another part of it, honestly, is that we're about to solve this exercise. We're going to factor this expression, and the way we're going to factor it, the way we're going to determine the factors, is by solving an equation. <laughs> okay? So in order to carry this out, we will do this. But they're not the same thing. Okay? Similarly, in, in different circumstances, I can, I can give you an equation to solve, and the easiest thing for you to do will be to factor the left-hand side. <coughs> so to do this... It can help to do that, and to do this, it can help to do the other. But don't, com don't, don't lose the distinction between these two things. Okay, good. So that being said, <coughs> we want to factor this. So the way we're going to factor it is by solving that quadratic equation. Okay. 
So we want to solve a quadratic equation. <clears throat> Can we think of two numbers? So first off, is this quadratic monic? Yeah. No. So can we think of two numbers whose product is 27 and whose sum is uh, 2? No. You can think of no such numbers. So if that's the case, if that's the case, then how do we proceed? What's the, what's the bazooka that always works? The quadratic formula will work every time. Okay. So we'll use the quadratic formula with A is whatever and B is whatever and C is whatever. So what are A, B, and C in this specific exercise? A is 3, B is 2, and C is 9. Very good. Is there any question why A, B, and C are 3, 2, and 9 respectively? Okay. So then the formula is negative B plus or minus square root B squared minus 4AC. And then all of this over 2a. So that's the formula. I was, I was singing the song in my head, but trying not to sing it out loud. Okay, so then uh, that would be negative 2 plus or minus square root. Okay, so then b squared, that would be 4, and then minus 4 times 3 times 9. So 4 times 3 times 9 is... 108. So this would be 4 minus 108 over 2 times 3 is 6. Okay, so that's plugging stuff into the quadratic formula. And now I'd like to note, I'd like you to see that something notable is happening. What's going to happen under the radical? It's going to have a negative value. So I'm going to, on such a question, to make my my point clear to you, I will say factor and then I'll include the statement in C. So what does that mean? Factor in the complex numbers. So that, that means that it is permissible to proceed past the negative under the square root. Otherwise you'd have to say, well, there aren't any, it doesn't factor in the reals. So negative 2 plus or minus square root negative 104 over 6. And then how do we, how do we get past the, the negative in the square root? How do we fix that? Yeah, it comes out of the square root as i. So that would be 2 plus or minus square root 104 i, and then divide by 6. So that means that there are two solutions. What are they? 2 plus square root 104 i over 6. Or negative 2 plus and, and negative 2 minus. Very good. So there's two solutions. So now, are we finished with the exercise? No, but we did so much work. Are you telling me this work is not right? It is right. No, 104 doesn't, doesn't, nothing else nice can come out. Well, four could come out, but I, I really don't care actually. What was the instruction? Factor. Right? So this, this was just an aside. This I wanted to make sure you understood the difference between the two things. So in the end, I'm asking you to factor this. Have you factored this? No, you haven't. What you did is you solved this thing equal to zero. So the thing about finding solutions to polynomials is that if I give you a polynomial, if I give you a polynomial and you find 
that when you plug in 3 that you get 0, that means that x minus 3 is a factor. If 3 is a 0, then x minus 3 is a factor. What if 5 is a 0? Then x minus 5 is a factor. What if negative 7 is a 0? then x plus 7 is a factor, or if you like, x minus negative 7. What if banana is a 0? x minus banana is a factor, right? Similarly, supposing that x minus 10 is a, is a factor, what's a 0? 10. 10 is a 0. So the reason, part of the reason for the confusion that students have between the terminology is that is that the, the things that you're looking for here are in direct correspondence to the things you're looking for here. Zeros, that is to say solutions, are in direct correspondence to factors. Now what we did is we found two zeros. But what we want now is to turn these into the corresponding two factors. So if two is a zero, then what's a factor? X minus two. X minus two. So the fact that this is a zero means x minus this is a factor. And the fact that this is a 0 means that x minus this is a factor. So as a result, what we know is that 3x cubed plus 2x plus 9 must factor in this way. So x minus some, something goes in this slot multiplied by x minus something going in this slot. So if we had determined that the zeros were apple and banana, then x minus apple would be one of the factors and x minus banana would be the other factor. So all that we must do is, is place these in their slots. Now, before I do that, though, before I do that, I'd like to point out that what I've written could not possibly be the full story, could not possibly be right yet. Why could it not be right yet? Right. So observe that if you were to, if you were to, whatever I put in here, apple and banana, whatever I put in here, what, what will be the x squared coefficient presently? It'd be 1. You'd get 1x squared. But how many x squares do we, in fact, need? 3. So the real pattern is this. So isn't it nice that I left myself some horizontal space to put that 3? Yes? Is it 3x cubed or 3x squared? It should be squared. That's a, t that's a righto, which I take to mean a writing typo. I have no idea why I wrote that, but I suspect because I was writing a 3, I had 3 on the brain or something, I don't know. So, so the answer is then 3 times x minus, so we'll put the first one in, so negative 2 plus the square root of 104 i over 6 multiplied by x minus negative 2 minus the square root of 104 i over 6. Terrific. Okay, so that's the answer. That's the factorization of the polynomial. Any question about this exercise? So when I got here, when, when we got here to this position, or even this position really, I said, what notable thing is going to happen? And you all all said, ah, oh, well, it's going to be complex. Why? Because there'd be a negative under the radical, right? And if it didn't turn out to be the case, but supposing that 
what was under the radical was 38, then that would mean that there would not be complex numbers, complex solutions. And furthermore, what if what was under the radical was zero? Then it would be like this part is just gone. The only solution would be negative two over six if, the th if, it, if it happened to be the case that the thing under the radical was zero. So the, the quality, the qualities of what happens to the solution really depends on what's under the radical. So it's too cumbersome to say the thing that's under the radical. Okay, so it has its own name. So what's the name of the thing that's under the radical? Anyone know? I think I heard someone whisper it. What is it? Discriminant. So the expression under the radical in the quadratic formula is called the discriminant. So the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac. And then yes, all over 2a. And the discriminant is denoted as d, and it is b squared minus 4ac. So the thing under the radical, b squared minus 4ac, is called the discriminant. And what happens on any particular quadratic or quadratic equation depends on the discriminant in the following way. So here's a table of possibilities. So one possibility is that the discriminant is negative. So. So, uh, in such a case, how many real solutions will we have if the discriminant is negative? None, right? There won't be any. How many complex solutions? There'll have to be two. So that's just like on the previous page, right? So what was the discriminant of the quadratic on the previous page? Negative 104. Negative 104 was the discriminant. And notice that it had two complex solutions, this one and that one. So an example of this is the one on the previous page. 3x squared plus 2x plus 9. OK. Another possibility is that the discriminant could be zero. The discriminant could be zero. <clears throat> so that would be like taking the quadratic formula, b squared minus 4ac is zero, so that this part doesn't matter. So it'd be, it'd be negative b plus or minus zero. Well, what's negative b plus zero? Negative b. Negative b. Okay, then what's negative b minus zero? Also negative b, right? So then. In the case that the discriminant is 0, we just have negative b over 2a. So how many real solutions are there? Just one. And how many complex solutions are there? 
zero. Okay. Now that may be a little bit surprising to you. So let's look at an example of where that occurs. So how about, how about x squared minus 6x plus 9? So first, let's calculate the discriminant. So what's the discriminant of this? b squared, so it's 36. 36. Minus 4ac. a is 1, c is 9. 4 times 9, 36. OK, so it would be 36 minus 36, 0. So here's an example when the discriminant is 0. Now, I'd like for you to use your pre-existing skills and tell me, how does this factor? Mm -hmm. It factors as x minus 3, that's one of the factors, and then you get the same one again. So 3 is a 0, and then 3 is a 0 again. It's a 0 twice. So in that sense, there's only one 0. Now we're going to talk about counting how many times zeros appear later, and that'll be an important thing, but it's not important now. So this would have just one solution if we were to set this equal to zero, and it would be three. Okay, another possibility is the discriminant could be positive. So in this case, how many real solutions will there be? It'll be two. And how many complex solutions? None. And an example of this would be the following. So how about x squared um, minus 8x plus 16. <clears throat> Did I do that right? No. I didn't. Sorry. Uh, so how about uh, 15? That'll work. So what is the, what is the discriminant of this? Right, 64, because negative 8 squared is 64, and then minus 4 times 1 times 15. 4 times 1 times 15 is 60, and 64 minus 60 is 4. So the discriminant is 4, which is positive. So we're expecting there to be, at least if, if this is true, we're expecting there to be two solutions. Now, please use your pre-existing knowledge to factor this. Very good. So do you observe that there are two distinct factors? And if this was equal to 0, what would the solutions be? Very good. OK. So any question about this? So in principle, I could now give you a quadratic. And I could say, I don't even want you to solve it, but I want you to tell me how, how many real solutions will there be, how many complex solutions will there be, et cetera. So now, now. Besides that, besides the reals and the complex, we also have another set that's of interest to us. And that is the reals versus the rationals. So would someone please remind me of the difference between the set of reals and the set of rationals? What's the difference? Hmm. So reals, this means, this means any number at all on the number line. Okay. And therefore, every rational is real. But what does it mean to be rational? Can you remember? It was the first day. And a few times, other times, but it was the first day. It means that we're talking about a number that can be expressed as the ratio of two integers. So for example, 3 over 10 is rational. 3 over 10 is rational. The square root of 5, that's not rational. You cannot write the square root of 5 as the ratio of two integers. It's not possible. 
And we demonstrated that in particular was not possible for the square root of 2, you might remember. We did that, that crazy computation. Okay, so, so, <coughs> when, when A, B, and C are rational, when, when all of the coefficients in the quadratic equation are rational, the solutions will be rational when <coughs> the discriminant is the square of a rational. So an example would be something like this. So we could take this one, say. So x squared minus 8x plus 15 equal to 0. So now we've already established half a page up that the solutions are 3 and 5. We've established that. Okay, But what is the discriminant of this quadratic? It's 4, right? Because it would be negative 8 squared minus 4 times 1 times 15, which is 4. And notice that the square root of the discriminant, which is the square root of 4, well, you can get rid of the radical. So the fact that, the fact that you can get rid of the radical means that the solutions will be rational. And this is in comparison to <coughs> x squared minus 8x, and then let's say plus 14 equal to 0. So almost exactly the same equation, right? I just changed the 15 to a 14. But what is the discriminant in this case? So it'll be negative 8 squared minus 4 times uh, 1 times 14. That's, what, 40, 56? So 4 times 14. And then what's 64 minus 56? 8, right? So the square root of the discriminant is the square root of 8. And is, and it, is 8 a perfect square? Right, so then, so then the best you can do, in a sense, is to make this 2 square root 2. So you can't get rid of the radical. So, so that means that the solutions are not rational. Are the solutions real? Yes, they're real, but not rational. And they're not complex, either. Good. So now I have a confession. I find this page incredibly boring, just to be honest with you. <laughs> and this, this is not the way that I think about this at all. Uh, but it's necessary, and, and good even, for me to be conversant in thinking about it in this way. Uh, so the way that I actually think about this is different, and there's I'd, I'd estimate about a 50% probability that you might prefer to think about it in the way I'm about to say. And there's also a 50% probability that between the two possibilities you'd like this one better. Okay. So that being the case, not yet, but soon, we're going to start plotting things. That is to say, we're going to start drawing a bunch of pictures. And quadratics, when you draw them, they all have a certain shape when you, when you plot them. So what is the name of the shape of the plot of a quadratic? Parabola. 
<laughs> yeah. So it's got a it's got a certain shape, bendy like a bowl. Okay. Now, for a negative discriminant, for a negative discriminant, the quadratic would look like this. It would sort of be like that. And I have a question for you. The horizontal line and the red parabola, how many times do they intersect? Zero times. Zero real solutions. Okay, now, I want you to stick with this picture right here from, for a moment, and I want you to imagine that I hold the horizontal line fixed. It cannot move. Then I grab the parabola and I pull it down until it just is resting on the line. So just resting on the line. And how many times do the parabola and the line touch in such a case? Exactly once. They touch right there. And how many real solutions are there? Exactly one. And now, continuing with this thought experiment, suppose I hold the horizontal line fixed and I grab the parabola and I pull it down a little bit further. How many times does the red parabola intersect the horizontal line? Two. Exactly twice. <clears throat> and that means that there's exactly two real solutions. So, so the number of real solutions is equivalent to, to the number of intersections. Zero intersections, one intersection, two intersections. So my confession to you is essentially that I don't think about it in this way at all. <laughs> I think about it like this. So whatever you prefer. And this is also true, you can, parabolas can also o open upside down. Okay. The, whether or not they open up or down, we'll get, to, we'll get to that. But in the end, it's just whether or not the leading coefficient is positive or negative. Okay, good. Any question about this? Okay, good. So now let's go to the next thing. So we're in section 2.6 now, but because of the way I've sort of meandered through the topics, not exactly the way the book does them, we actually don't, we don't have very much to do in section 2.6. So this is called something like other types of equations. Okay, so an example is, how about this? So 3x minus 5 in absolute value is equal to 10. And I want you to solve this. Okay, so let's ignore some of the fine details for a minute and just look at it like this. So I'm covering something up. So we're going to put something into the into the absolute value. So we're going to put we're going to put a thing into the thing. But that's kind of a cumbersome phrase. So remember in math the thing that you put into the thing is called the argument. Okay? So the argument to the absolute value. What arguments could I provide to the absolute value so that 10 would come out? Negative 10 would work, and 10 would work. Either one of these would work. Okay, so if we could arrange for whatever I'm covering up to be negative 10, that would be a solution. If we could arrange for whatever I'm covering up to be positive 10, that also would be a solution. So to solve this equation, what that means is that it breaks into two pieces. 
So we have two possibilities. Either 3x minus 5 is negative 10. That's one possibility. Or 3x minus 5 is 10. Either one of those is possible. So now we can solve these individually. Okay, so I'll solve the first one. So if we add 5, so 3x is negative 5, and then divide by 3, x is negative 5 thirds. Any question about this one? Okay, I'll solve the other one. So add 5 to both sides, so 3x is 15, divide by 3, x is 5. Okay, interesting. So let's make sure that we understand what this is, what this, what this means. So let's start with a simpler one first. Suppose we take the original equation and we substitute x is 5. Well, that would be 3 times 5, which is, and then minus 5, which is, the absolute value of which is 10. Okay? So that seems reasonable. So now let's take, let's plug in negative 5 thirds. So what is 3 times negative 5 thirds? Five. Negative 5. And then you subtract 5, and you have negative 10, the absolute value of which is 10. 10. Okay, so do you see that, ah, there's two, there's two of these, two solutions, that one and that one. And all of these absolute value equations take the same, um, take the same shape, essentially. So let's do a different one. What if I was to change it slightly and say the absolute value of 3x minus 5 is equal to uh, negative 7, and no one say anything. So I want you to tell me, how would you go about, uh, not tell me, but think about, how would you go about solving this, thinking about what it's asking you to do? Now, I don't want anyone to say anything yet. So we should do it just like the other one, right? right? It's just whatever's in here and then plus or minus negative 7, right? Why not? Right, so let's think about this for just a moment. And I cover this up and just look at the structure of the equation for just a moment. What could you put into that absolute value? so that negative 7 would come out. There's nothing you could put into that absolute value so that negative 7 would come out. You can't make it happen. The things that come out of the absolute value need to be positive or zero. That's it. That's the only possibility. There are no others. So what's the correct response to this? There's sad no solution. Sad face. sad face, yeah. Well, you can add a sad face, but I need you to write no solution. Okay. Okay, another possibility is I could say solve absolute value 3x minus 5 equal to 0. And you need to think about it in the same way as the previous two. Right? On this one we said, what could we put in there so that 10 would come out? 10 or negative 10. 
what could we put in there so that negative 7 would come out? There isn't anything that you could arrange. So, what can you put into the absolute value so that 0 would come out? 0. And that is the only possibility. So, 3x minus 5 is 0. x is 5 thirds. Now, I have a confession to make. This is not at all how I think about this in my head, right? So it's the dialogue that I'm, I'm, I'm having, right? Uh, but this is not at all what I, how I think about this. So just like the quadratics, quadratics have a certain characteristic shape when you draw them, and that characteristic shape is given the name parabola. When you plot, when you plot an absolute value, then it also has a characteristic shape. What is its characteristic shape? Mm -hmm. A V, like this. Okay, so when you plot an absolute value, it looks like a V. It looks like a V. So now, I want to explain to you the following. So there's three possibilities. So the absolute value looks like a V. And I have a question for you. For this one, how many times does the absolute value cross the horizontal axis? It does not. The red and the horizontal axis do not intersect. Which one of these, one of these three, corresponds to this case? Not the one at the top. The one in the middle. How many solutions? No solutions. How many intersections? No intersections. So, an example, uh, this is a visual example of what, uh, uh, of this one. So this one would have no solutions. So now, sticking with this conceptual model, I'll hold, I'll hold this still, the horizontal line still, and I'll grab the absolute value v, and I'll pull it down, pull it down until it just rests on top of the axis. So how many intersections are there between the absolute value v and the horizontal axis? One. There's exactly one. Exactly one intersection. Which case above is, in, is, is this one? The last one, when there's exactly one solution. And then the last case is when I'll hold the horizontal axis still, I'll grab that absolute value v and pull it down yet a little further. And now how many intersections? Two intersections. And then how many solutions? Two solutions. So when, when you're given such an example of an absolute value equation, you need to carefully consider which one of the three possibilities you find yourself in. Because the error that students make most frequently is they think that, that these two are, are the same. They'll say, they think that, okay, every time I see this, I just say that the inside of the absolute value is plus or minus the right-hand side. So 3x minus 5 is plus or minus 10, blah, 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 blah. 
And then they get here and they say, OK, 3x minus 5 is plus or minus negative 7. Blah, 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 blah. Of course, it's ridiculous <coughs> when you look at this picture, equivalent to me asking, just how many times do they intersect? They don't. But you just got finished telling me that they intersected twice. OK? So let's have another one of these and the time remaining. Tolerably boring. Okay, here we go. <coughs> so, absolute value x squared plus 2x minus 36 is 12. Okay, and I want you to solve. in C. Okay, so in the first place, because you can see that this is an absolute value equation, you need to set, you need to set your mind right and, and ask yourself, is, are the solutions going to branch into two cases? Will there be exactly one case? Or will there be no solutions whatsoever? So which, what is it going to be? There has to be, well, there's going to be more than two solutions, but there's going to be two different cases. The reason why there's going to be more than two solutions is because um, this one will have two, this thing has two solutions by itself, and then there's going to be two cases, right? So now, if I modified the exercise, it, I'm going to modify it back, but if I did this, if I did that, then what would be the correct response? That there's no solution whatsoever. Okay. So changing it back, that means that this problem is actually just a slightly disguised way to say, I want you to solve two different quadratic equations. Okay. It means that I want you to solve x squared min uh, plus 2x minus 36 is negative 12. So that is to say, I want you to tell me about when this thing in, inside of the absolute value was negative 12. And I also want you to solve what? Yeah, the same thing. x squared plus 2x minus 36 when it's positive 12. So here's two separate quadratic equations. So how do we proceed? So every time you want to solve a quadratic equation, you need to make one of the sides 0. So you add 12 in the first. Mm -hmm. So x squared plus 2x, and then if we add 12, that'd be minus 24 equals 0. And then this one would be x squared plus 2x, and then now we want to subtract 12, so minus 48 is equal to 0. <laughs> wow, that's neat. I've never seen one like this. So does this one factor? Yeah. It does. How does it factor? Very good. Does this one factor? Yeah. Yes. How does it factor? That was unexpected to me, that they would both factor so nicely. So uh, what are the solutions for this one? Negative 6, positive 4. What are the solutions for this one? Negative 8 and positive 6. So. That's what I meant when I said there won't be two solutions, but rather it branches into two cases. Have a nice weekend.